Hey everybody, and welcome back for a fourth video about our really cool Umbrella Modular Oscillations Bundle. Now, in the last video, we talked about how you can run these LFOs at audio rate. In this video, we're gonna use the noise that that produces to create our own percussion. This is actually very simple to do, and once you have some interesting noise sources, it can get fun and you can get really creative with this. So let's jump on in. Now real quick, as we start off here, just a refresher if you haven't seen that other video, uh, we've got the included Cherry Audio oscillator, and I have patched the square waveform out into the clock input. This is now forcing all of these LFOs to run at audio rate. So if we were to take a listen to one of these, oh, and I've got, I've got the shape all set at the far right, which is the random shape at audio rate. This produces noise. So I'm just going to take the 1-1 one, one output from this one. So there you can hear what, what we've got going on. With that quick review out of the way, let's talk about creating our own percussion because this is actually very easy and very fun. Now there's two things that you're going to need. In addition to a noise source, you're gonna need some kind of envelope and you're gonna need an amplifier. The ones that I recommend starting with is, there's one called Percussion EG, which uh, should be included with most versions of Voltage Modular. And the other, which is, I know for sure is included with everything, is called Amplifier. Now, later on, once you get the basic here, you can kind of explore using different envelope generators, but, but this one is a pretty good one to get started with. So what we're gonna need to do here is we're gonna wanna wire up the output of one of our noise generators into the input of the amplifier, and then we're gonna take the envelope out from the percussive envelope generator. We're gonna wire that into the CV input of the amplifier, and then of course, we're gonna take the output from the amplifier and wire that into our output so we can hear it. Now we're gonna need something to trigger the one of these accent or trigger in. You can use a sequencer. I happen to have one that I recommend, Gate Nueva 64. That's great, but for the purpose of this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a very simple module that's actually free by P Moon called Buttons to One. What Buttons to One is, is we've got this button here, and every time we click it, it's gonna give us a trigger on the CV out. So I'm gonna head and patch that over here from CV out to trigger in. You can hear there that every time I, I click it, we've got something going on. Now, one thing you might notice is that right at the start of that, there's a very distinct percussive clicking sound. Let me turn that up. So there you can hear that four out of five times we get this very clear t -t 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 right at the beginning. With the percussive EG, that is actually something that you can turn on and off. So here you can see by default, it's gonna come on when we turn that off. So there you can hear it's gone. Now, again, there isn't really a right or wrong here. This is just to be creative and you can decide based on the sound you're creating if you do or don't want that. Okay, so with our trigger generator in place and our audio inputs wired up, let's start being creative and having some fun here. So we can adjust the decay amount and that's that's gonna change quite a lot about the sound. If we're creating a closed hi-hat, we're gonna wanna pull that down more. Yeah, even that's a little long. So I've got it right now, this is at about 125 milliseconds. Right, so that's pretty cool. We can also adjust the, the curve. So this is how quickly the sound falls off or how quickly it doesn't fall off. So here, it's not gonna fall off as quickly. It almost sounds a little robotic, and we can pull that in to have more of this exponential curve. Right, and so already, right there, we're starting to hear it sounding a little bit more hi-hat-like. Now, one thing that I did off-camera as I was tweaking around with this is I, I did adjust the frequency. So by default, you know, it might start off over here somewhere. And that just kind of sounds like a drum that's not tuned right. As you push this higher, that's the frequency range that a hi-hat's gonna be in. And you start to get a little bit more of that crispy sound. That almost, that almost sounds like a hand clap there. That's pretty cool. 
I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of these, and let's just take a listen to all of these different sounds. Oh, that's, that's so neat and digital. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of fun. So here I'm pushing it even higher. So that, that almost has a cowbell sound to it. I mean, we could pull back a little bit on that. So there, what I, what I did is I pulled the shape back to be about halfway between the square wave and this random, because that will pull some of the noise out and it'll give us a little bit more of a blend of that, that tone. Yeah, and that's, that's sounding very, I'm not going to make a need more cowbell joke. I'm not going to do it. Oh, that, that has an interesting texture to it as well. So you can see here, as we kind of go through this, we can start tweaking around with the sounds. Maybe we want to make more of an open hat sound. And if you want to do open hat, you're going to want a little bit more decay time. So you can see I've, I've turned that up. It was about 125. Let's just try it at 500 here. Yeah, that sounds pretty neat. All right, let's actually put this together in a sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and add in uh, the Gate Nuevo sequencer. And let's program ourselves a sequence here real quick. So keep that one. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to, we're going to group these together. I'm going to make two instruments. So I'm going to use this one for what we've got it on right now. And I'm going to patch that into this trigger input. Oh, where'd my buttons go? So... Yeah, we'll keep that one around and what I'll do is I'll put that on every uh, we'll just try it on every third okay so with that in place let's make a second one I'll use the smooth oscillator for that I'm just gonna reuse this same leader oscillator because there isn't really a reason to add a new one but I am gonna add a new percussive envelope and another amp to make that. All right, we'll do the same thing. We're gonna take the output here, input, turn off the click, or envelope out is gonna control the amplifier, and then we'll patch that in over here. Now this one, I think I'm gonna do the closed hat, so we'll keep, we'll keep decay down, and we'll use channel two for this. And just to make it easier for me to hear, I'm also gonna wire up this button controller. Want that to get even shorter. I'm gonna pull the decay curve down. Yeah, all right, so we'll just put in a little bit of a pattern here. Now you know what this needs. It needs a kick drum. Now, it might be possible to synthesize a kick drum with this as well. Let's try it. So to synthesize a kick drum, we're going to need a couple of things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take what we have, and I'm just going to slide it over to the side so it's out of the way. And I'm going to add another copy of Smooth. The reason that I'm doing that is because the, the like bass tone of a kick drum is going to be a sine wave. And I'll add another. Uh, I'll add another oscillator here, and amplifier, and of course a percussive envelope generator. Okay, let me wire these up real quick. So what I'm going to do now is find something that's about the right tone, and in order to hear it, I'm going to have to turn up the decay a bit. Yeah, so that's kind of a bit much. So there you can hear we've, we've kind of got, we've got a little bit of the sound going on. It's probably a little low. All right, so that's decent. Now, one of the typical elements that you find with a kick drum is that there is pitch modulation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna take the envelope output and I'm gonna patch that into pitch CV. Wow, that's a lot, that's too much. 
So let's go ahead and add an attenuator. So I've got an attenuator here. I'm going to patch the envelope out into the input and we'll just we'll bring this down a bit. And maybe even more. Oh, and look at that. We've got a kick drum. So the key thing that's going on here, a, a very classic element of a kick drum is when you think of an acoustic kick drum and the drummer uses their foot and the, the, the pedal, that, that mallet thing, hits the head of the drum, there is an initial burst of energy and then that, that energy dies and that actually creates a, a descending envelope in the pitch, which is why you get the kick drum sound when you have the envelope also modulating the pitch. Now you can adjust the amount over here. So if you pull it way down, whoops, it's a little bit more basic and we can, we can really emphasize it by pushing that up. Now you notice again, it's got the click in there. Again, this is to taste. You can decide if you want the click or not. I'm usually not one for clicky uh, kick drums. That sounds good. One last thing though, is because this LFO gives us a sweep between noise and sine wave, we can actually add a little bit of extra rumble here onto our kick drum by, by dialing in this amount. So I've had it set perfectly vertical on the sine wave, but if we were to push it all the way over, that's, that's obviously not what we want, but somewhere in the middle might actually work. No. That's not bad. Oh, so if you go up an octave, that's basically a tom drum at that point. <laughs> that is such a tom drum. All right, anyways, uh, there we go. I'm going to add in the typical line here. We'll set the length and hit reset. <laughs> All right, so that may not be the most percussive, amazing line that you've ever heard, but hey, creating your own percussion can be a lot of fun. We just did this in a few minutes, but if you really sit down and dial all this in, you can get some custom percussive sounds using these basic raw ingredients and just sculpting them to something that's interesting. I hope this video gave you a bunch of ideas and you have fun with it. Until next time.